by Cicerone Amy Beers, and it's time for Indies Beer of the Month. My pick for July is the Hopopotamus IPA from Metasol Brewery. This IPA is full of big flavor, bright aromas, and is a little more complex than your typical IPA. It's a great one for summer and one of the best IPAs in Indianapolis. Just when you think it's gonna zig, it zags. Try to keep up. For those who are new to my channel, <laughs> welcome. Please excuse me while I go dry my hair. Also, I did not find any hippos in there. Goodbye. <laughs> My name is Amy Beers and yes, I do like beer. And I'm a certified Cicerone, which is kind of like a wine sommelier except for in the beer world. I give beer tours in Indianapolis and when COVID hit and made my tours pretty much impossible, I started this YouTube channel as a way to continue highlighting the local beer scene. I recently started doing this Beer of the Month series as a fun way to highlight local craft beer. This is not another review site. I do not give the beer ratings. This is me with my expertise telling you about beer I think you'd like to know about. My goal is to highlight beer that it might be the best example of a specific style or maybe has a really cool story to tell or is just unique in some way. My goal is to help you discover new beer to try or if it's a beer that you're already familiar with, that you get to learn something new and maybe appreciate it on a new or deeper level. I do try to pick beer that I think is good, but again, this is not a review site. I do occasionally post a video tied to beer history, but for the most part, I'm highlighting beer from the greater Indianapolis region. So if you like beer, you wanna learn more about it, you wanna appreciate it on a deeper level, you wanna discover some new beer and local breweries to try, make sure you subscribe to my channel. So today I'd like to tell you about one of the best IPAs in Indianapolis, the Hopopotamus IPA from Metazoa Brewery. In biology, Metazoa is a classification that basically just means animals. And Metazoa Brewery has become known in Indianapolis as the Animal Brewery. Since they've opened in 2016, they have donated 5% of their profits to various animal and wildlife foundations. They'll often partner with the Indianapolis Zoo to brew special releases that benefit specific exhibits and conservation efforts. Metazoa is of course pet friendly, and I've seen all kinds of animals at this brewery. Dogs are kind of a given, but I've also seen cats. I've seen cute little baby bunnies. I've seen goats. I even once saw a snake. They are the only brewery in Indianapolis with a dog park. They have a great patio space with an awesome view of the cityscape. There's the old gold barbecue food truck. Their brisket with their liquid gold sauce pairs really nicely with this hopopotamus IPA, by the way. It's the perfect spot to grab a beer, eat some barbecue, play with your pup, and watch the summer sunsets. Many of their beers are named with fun animal themes. Hopopotamus, as you probably can guess, is a play on hippopotamus. And it is an IPA that is full of big flavor. Mmm. I just love this bouquet. It exhibits bright aromas of grapefruit, orange peel, tropical fruit. You may also experienced some notes of berry, mango, stone fruit, pine, spice, bubble gum, and perhaps just a dash of floral bitterness supported by a soft sweetness from a dash of Vienna malts. It is so hot out here and this IP is seriously so good. These complex fruit type flavors come from two types of hops that they use in the recipe, citra and mosaic. Citra displays citrus notes, and mosaic, as you can probably guess, is responsible for that variety of flavor that I mentioned previously. Mm. This IPA is very aromatic with the aromas created through a process called dry hopping. So what is dry hopping? Dry hopping is a process that brewers use to extract flavors and aroma from the hops. Hops are those little green cones that brewers use to add bitterness to beer to help balance out the sweetness from 
the malts. Hops can also contribute flavor and aroma to beer depending on how they are processed. There are two main components inside of a hop that is of particular interest to brewers. You have resins and you have oils. Resins contribute bitterness to beer while the oils contribute the flavor and aroma. Hops are boiled inside a brew kettle and the longer they brew, the more of that bitterness from the resins is extracted. At the same time, the oils will boil off and escape through the steam. They're tricky like that. So if brewers want to add hop flavor and aroma, they'll add the hops toward the end of the boil or they'll employ the dry hopping technique, which is to add the hops later on in the brewing process. For dry hopping, hops are usually added in the fermentation tank when the temperatures are a bit lower than they would be in the boil. Or sometimes they'll add them in the conditioning phase and sometimes they'll even add them in the serving vessel. But usually it's added in the fermentation tank when the beer liquid or what's called the wort isn't at a boil. It's essentially like a cold infusion technique that really helps to extract those hop flavors and aroma from the hop oils. So hop upon, ooh, I always love when there's more in there. <laughs> it's like surprise extra beer. So the hop eponymous IPA employs the dry hopping technique, which is what gives this IPA its big, bold, intense, aromatic fruity notes. And maybe a little bit of floral. There's a little bit of floral in there. There's also a dash of Vienna malt in this recipe, which is a little unusual for an IPA style of beer. Vienna malt is a high quality German malt. It's toasted just lightly to bring out some nutty and sometimes honey flavors. It also helps contribute to the body of the beer, which helps give the beer a little bit more fullness. The use of Vienna malt isn't typical for an IPA style. IPAs tend to use mostly pale malts, which is a more milder tasting malt. And what that does is helps create a platform for the hop characteristics to really shine through, which is really what an IPA is all about. Hopopotamus does use pale malts, but then it uses a dash of Vienna malts, which gives it just a little bit more complexity, a little bit more malt characteristic, and a little bit more sweetness to help balance out the bitterness from the hops. And what that does is it really kind of helps round out and soften those hop characteristics. So it's not a very bitter beer. If you're not really into really bitter IPAs, but are interested in trying an IPA, this might be uh, a really good one to try. Hop Eponymous comes in at 70 IBU, which stands for International Bitterness Units. And we can usually use it to kind of tell how bitter a beer might be. 70 is on the higher end of the spectrum for an IPA style of beer, but I don't find this beer to really be that bitter. And again, part of that would be from the use of the Vienna malts that helps balance out some of that bitterness and, and really kind of soften those hop characteristics. It just really rounds it out. Again, I find it to be one of the best IPAs in Indianapolis. If there's an IPA that you are particularly fond of or you have a favorite IPA you'd like to share, let me know in the comments. I'm Amy Beers, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a like and share it with your beer loving friends. Also, for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get notified. I hope you are having a great summer. Hope you're staying out of that rain and that heat and enjoying some refreshing brews. Until we drink again, cheers.